Hello everyone, it's Ryx here again with a, another video on Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. This time around, I'm going to be making a guide video around the Hunter main class. This will go over how to use the sword and wired lance, but not the spear partisan, because it's a weapon that I do not have a lot of experience with, and it wasn't really one of the weapons that I enjoyed playing with with Hunter. So I stuck mostly to the sword and wired lance enough that I think I could give my opinion on how a good build and playstyle works for both of them. So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to use solely the sword when you build only to use the sword as hunter. And then secondly, how to use only the wired lance. And then last, we'll go over how they both work in tandem and how you can swap them out depending on the situation that you're going to be facing in the game. So let's get started right up into it. So here we are at the class counter for Hunter. We're going to be talking about specifically if you were to main just the sword for Hunter first. Wired Lance we'll speak about later. So if you're going to be maining just the sword for Hunter main class, you're going to want to start off obviously by picking up Guard Counter and Guard Counter Plus. As you are going to be using your weapon action skill to guard and parry, these two abilities will be able to help you do more damage with a powerful counter attack whenever you manage to parry an enemy attack. Now, you're also going to want to pick up Omnidirectional Guard and Iron Will. Iron Will protects you from dying every three minutes, and it is a very helpful whenever you take a large amount of damage, surprisingly. And Omnidirectional Guard simply is useful for being able to guard from all angles, as most classes that are able to parry or dodge an attack still take damage when the attack happens behind them. Now, for the rest of your abilities, this is when it gets a little uh, tricky. So you can choose to pick up the fifth attack with your sword. The fifth attack is the same attack that you do whenever you sword guard counter plus. Now, it's not necessary, but it is there for you to be able to pick up if you'd like. There's also the optional ability of being able to pick up war cry, which enables you to taunt enemies to make them focus on you. I honestly like this ability myself because it enables me to pull the aggro of the boss, which allows me to focus more on the boss's attention towards me, which enables me to parry and guard more effectively. Now, for the rest of your points, I would suggest picking up full Hunter Physique and full Flash Guard, as these two abilities in tandem will help you just take reduced damage. And with Sword, there isn't really much else you need here as Sword by itself is mostly just all about the guards and the parries, and not so much about the photon arts, as the photon arts are mostly used to either close distance or do damage in certain intervals. Now, let's get right up into the discussion of the photon arts next. Alright, here we have our Hunter photon arts for the Sword class for Hunter. Uh, we have Spiral Edge. Twisting Zapper, and Caliber Shriek, all of which can be charged to do additional damage or just more attacks against the opponent. Now, I like to use Spiral Edge not really as a charge, but just as a quick uh, Photon Art action to do some damage in between the enemy's attacks before I have to use my weapon action to guard or counter. Twisting Zapper, I use most of the time to close the gap with enemies that are further away or in general when it's wanting to attack a large group of enemies as this has a lot of aoe to it and then finally you have your caliber street caliber street comes with a lot of damage however to get the maximum usage out of it you need to hold down the charge on it which leaves you vulnerable to a lot of damage while you're setting it up this is best used on bosses that get downed or elemental affected and are just stunned in place for a set amount of time, giving you plenty of time to charge this up to the full damage potential. All right, here I'm gonna show you how to use each of the photon arts and what they do in their effectiveness. First off, we have Spiral Edge. It's just a quick double hit upswing, but if you charge it, it does increase the damage it does as well as add multi hits into it. Twisting Zapper is good for just closing the gap, like I said. A simple charge of it, it's just a quick dash. However, if you hold it down, it travels much farther while doing a large amount of AoE. And then finally, we have Caliber Streak. Now, Caliber Streak, again, is best used against enemies that are in down position or simply not moving too much, so that way you don't have to worry too much about getting attacked. Caliber Streak is a simple, just hold down, and it does a lot of damage. However, again, if your target moves out of your position, you will have to reposition, which could cost you time. 
or if you're vulnerable if the enemy is attacking you are vulnerable to being attacked during that time so against bosses you want to make sure that you are executing it properly during the times that they're supposed to be executed it really helps against the urgent quest bosses and just veterans in general now up ahead i'm going to show you a fight with a regular veteran enemy these are the enemies that you end up farming as the game goes on one of these this enemy is uh particularly easy to focus on just either photon arting or just parrying in general you want to make sure to be popping war cry and parrying and guarding as it is make sure you're popping your weapon action to either guard the attack or if you time this at the exact moment you get hit you will perform a parry which will eliminate all damage from you and you're able to proc your counterattack abilities i recommend this boss as a good starter to just learning how to do the parries with the sword class as it is a very difficult concept to grasp in the beginning and you do have to cut it close because if you fail the parry you will end up taking damage however don't be afraid to simply just guard when you do not believe that you will be able to parry it as the guard still functions as a good way to just simply not take any damage. Make sure to be using your photon abilities only when you're sure that the boss is going to not hit you right there. You see that if you time it improperly, you are open to attack and it makes it difficult to take the hit. You want to make sure to constantly be on top of the boss as the hunter. As being away from the boss just means that you are not able to do any damage make sure to be swapping through your abilities and if the boss gets away from you you could always follow it up with a twisting zapper and use spiral edge to do consistent damage output hunter is a very easy class to start off with if you are new the PSO2 New Genesis, as it is very easy and very simple to figure out with the sword class. And bossing is very simple with it, because all you need to do is just be close and just be paying attention mostly to the boss. Photon art usage isn't really required, as you will do enough damage with your counterattacks. Alright, lastly here for Sword Hunter, we're going to be talking about the choice of weapon for your 4-star. Now, there are different types of 4 stars for different regions. The sword falls under the category of the Catalea type. And while there is also a Resurger sword, I say that the Catalea, in my opinion, is the better of the two to have for Hunter Sword. While Resurger does give you crit potency whenever you parry an attack, the Catalea just gives you 5% extra damage as long as you stay closer to max HP. And if you are performing your parries in a good timing then staying close to max hp will not be that difficult also with how tanky that you are going to be with your passive abilities you will not be taking much damage as it is letting you keep the passive going for a very long time now also in terms of units that you're going to want i highly suggest using the default units that you get actually from the red chest these units have the highest defense value of all the units and also they give you a base amount of PP. Now mine obviously give me more, but that's because I have mine augmented. They give you a base of four, each one of them, and they give you a base of 13 defense, making them just very ideal for any situation. Now I do recommend that if you do not want these units for any reason, you do not want to use them, the second set that I would recommend to you is actually going to be the Catalea armor set. The Catalea armor set is the middle ground of the fence, and it focuses more on an HP uh, bonus instead of a PP bonus. You'll end up getting 20 HP, and I believe 2 PP from it base without any augments, which could help you have just more HP to be take less damage, and also just more PP in general for your abilities as well. Although, again, in my opinion the ones that you get from the red chest are best in slot now we're going to move on to talk about the wired lance and what i recommend building for that next Alrighty, here we're going to start explaining which class skills you want to pick up for a wired lance only build for main class hunter now it's going to be roughly the same as there's only so much difference you can actually be with the limited skills that we have available to us right now 
Now, of course, you're going to want to pick up the perfect parry first, as this will allow your weapon action to actually be able to parry enemy attacks. Without this, you actually cannot parry anything on the Wired Lance to start off with. Second, you want to move over here and pick up the Arts Avenger skill, so that way you can then pick up perfect parry whenever you cast a Photon Art ability. Not only will you perfect parry, as in take no damage whenever you properly cast a Photon Art right at the moment of taking damage, but you will also increase the amount of damage that you do with that Photon Art with this ability. Now then, we're, we're going to obviously pick up Omnidirectional Guard, as once again, guarding from all directions is an invaluable skill when trying to parry with your weapon action. You are then going to pick up Anchor Advance and Extra Attack for more damage. And then, these are optional here. What these end up doing is that if you're using a P if you're using a Photon Art constantly back to back, and you'll end up doing this against bosses or enemies that are down, it will allow you to immediately move into your normal attack combos. Now these are not required, but they are optional. If you do take points in this, you'll be you won't be able to take points in other things as you go forward. Now, of course, we want to pick up Iron Will because being able to negate death every three minutes if something does a ridiculous amount of damage to you is always helpful. And then finally, for the rest of your points, as you can see, we only have 13 points remaining at this. You can build all into Hunter Physique, although I recommend personally going fully into Flash Guard for the 20% damage reduction. And then from here... It's kind of an option. You could just finish off and take three points into Hunter Physique for your active damage reduction. Or if you want to go one into Hunter Physique, you could then put two points into this. Or even negate one of Flash Guard and build into the Slow Landing Charge Hunter. This will allow you to charge your PAs in the sky without dropping to the ground immediately. Which could help you against certain bosses that like to take to the skies. Now with this in mind, we're going to show now how the PA... A's work for Wired Lance as it is an entirely different playstyle compared to Sword as I explained earlier. So here we go. So here we have the Hunter PAs for Wired Lance right here. First off we have Cutting Lair. This one is honestly a good photon art to use on a group of enemies that are just directly in front of you for lots of extra damage. Then we have Vein Mixture which is a good mobility uh, photon art for Wired Lands, allowing you to spin and cleave through enemies, as it says here. However, you'll see just how mobility is here in a minute as I give you a example on everything. And then finally, we have Turbulent Train. I like to use this photon art to attack any bosses or any certain enemies that are in a position where they're either downed or very vulnerable to a large amount of damage. Similar to how Caliber Streak was for the Sword Hunter, this is my go-to for attacking downed enemies and downed targets. Now I'm going to show you just a quick run here in the laboratory of how to use the Photon Arts and how your normal execution will be with Wired Lance when it comes to just regular gameplay. Now then, here we have just a typical grind session when it comes to the endgame farming. I personally love using Wired Lance over the sword when it comes to mobbing as it just does a lot of AoE. By using Vein Mixture to get close to enemies, you can really maneuver around them to constantly be doing damage and keeping up with their movements no matter where they go. Make sure to use your weapon action which pulls you towards enemies from a long distance and does a strong attack when you get to your target. It's very, very mobile uh, weapon class when it comes to Hunter. Personally, one of my favorite ones. While I do like the amount that you can parry and play a play a safe game when it comes to using the sword with Hunter, I just prefer Wired Lance because of its intense ability to mob like crazy. Always very helpful when it comes to doing a lot of damage to set up a lot of PSE bursts with your party members. And then using Cutting Lair or Turbulent Train to do a lot of damage when you see an enemy's weak spot be exposed. It is not as strong as some of the Photon Arts from Hunter, obviously, as they have a higher potency. However, because Wired Lands can attack very quickly and reposition themselves, it does help you not have to worry about taking too much damage consistently. So I do recommend for anyone who prefers a, a kind of tanky setup while also being very mobile and doing lots of damage to a large group of enemies, Wirelance is definitely what I would recommend you to do. 
And finally, now we're here with the same debate as with the Sword Hunter is best in slot 4 star. Now personally, I do enjoy the Forces Wire with its Bastion potential being able to give you a barrier that reduces damage you take by 40% when at max HP. This is always really nice in case you want to be prepared for those attacks that do lots of damage and make sure that you don't take very much. Although with the negative side to this is that while playing as a Hunter main class, you really are not taking much damage from a lot of things to begin with. So while it is, in my opinion, the, the better of the two options that you could be taking, the Resurger uh, wire is what you're going to be looking for. The Resurger wire offering you a potential that gives you crit potency increase, the same as we were talking with the sword, whenever you perform the weapon action. And since you are going to be performing the weapon action to dodge enemy attacks as it is, if you manage to parry an enemy attack with your weapon action, you will gain crit pot potency, which will help you increase your damage to all the mobbing that you are going to be doing while you are out on the field. That's why the Resurger is... Most definitely going to be best in slot, but in terms of my opinion, I still stick with the Forces Wire because you just end up taking little to no damage. And if you're playing with a party of people, you most likely will keep your HP at a high enough value where you won't have to worry about anything serious affecting you. And finally, in terms of the armor units, I still recommend using the ones from the Red Chest as these are still just very simple, very high defense, high PP units that you can be using however if you want to use um a different set of armor you have you have two different choices when it comes to wired lance if you want a more offensive pp based wire lance you could use the regular qualta armor not the red chest variant the regular one as this gives you just a solid amount of pp points and the issue with this though however is that it does not have as much defense as the red chest variant making you pretty squishy but at the same time your main stats will keep up with the defense required for you to not have to take that much damage and then of course same as with the sword hunter the catalea armor in my opinion is also very good as it gives you both hp and pp and a good amount of defense as well catalea armor being a good all-around armor series is always good for just end game on any class honestly now we're gonna go over how i would how i build my current hunter build and what I'm using currently in the game, which is the combination of both Wirelands and Sword for certain situations. Alright, now finally I'm going to be showing you my personal opinionated build that I use right now in New Genesis with the Hunter main class. I like to use both the Sword and Wirelands in tandem depending on the situation. My current loadout mostly revolves around the usage of all the skills that I mentioned previously for both Sword and Wirelands as I like to swap out between both of them. I'll show you right now how I use pretty much everything. I don't really focus too much on any certain ability. I do not, however, build into the Partisan or Spear because it's just it's something that I don't use. I do have those skill points on my main class, but I don't use them because, again... It's not a playstyle that I enjoy using too much right at this moment in time. If I try it out in the future and I enjoy it enough to be able to understand it, I will make an update video to this to explain how to use the Partisan Sphere. But for right now, this is what I end up using. And it works pretty nicely for me. I like to split my points between the Hunter Physique. I'm actually popping Hunter Physique at a pretty regular notice against certain bosses, so it does help me out. And then Flash Guard just for general damage reduction. Now that you have seen my sort of hybrid build for my Sword and Wired Lance Hunter main class with my class skills, let me explain to you how I use them in tandem with each other. I like to start off using the Forces Wire to do the mobbing, as in just running into groups of enemies doing a lot of damage with their all AoE of their attacks. It really helps to just clear out the numbers. It's especially useful in the PSE burst area as it helps to clear out enemy camps at a quick pace before moving on to the next one and constantly keeping the PSE burst gauge growing however when bosses appear i like to swap to the sword to perform the weapon action for the parry certain bosses are just incredibly easy to parry making it just a no-brainer to be using this weapon against them instead of the wire lance however there are some bosses that are very annoying or simply just easy enough to dodge that you don't have to be parrying them 
In that case, I use the forces wire and just make sure that I'm running the turbulent train photon art to land a lot of damage on their vulnerable weak spots. Now, let me explain to you the subclasses that I run with the hunter main class. Currently, there are two subclasses that I enjoy with the, with the hunter main class. The first of which is obviously going to be fighter. Fighter is a very powerful subclass if you're not using it already as a main class, and that's because it has these two abilities right here. Defeat Advantage in increases your damage against any enemy that gets downed via an element down or a physical down, and while it only is 5% as a sub, that's still 5% damage that is being given to you for practically free on any enemy that is downed. And then on top of that, while an enemy is also downed, you are on top of the extra damage you are getting from Defeat Advantage, you're also getting more PP Recovery from Defeat PP Recovery. This helps you be able to spam your abilities at a much faster rate while swapping between your normal attacks. Now, that's a subclass that's good against bossing. However, we also have Gunner, and Gunner is a good subclass simply against mobbing, good for PSE burst areas. As attack PP recovery you have here gives you a 20% increase to your PP recovery when attacking, simply anything. And then you have Overwhelm, which increases your PP recovery even more so when attacking any enemy that's not a boss. Really helpful for PSE burst areas, as for most of the time you will be fighting non-boss enemies. This helps you constantly be able to spam your photon arts without the worry of running out of your PP in the bottom. Very easy, very quick. Now, there are some other subclasses that could be useful to you. Um, the ones that are not, however, is Ranger. Ranger has no good subclass abilities. Well, Force has good natural recovery and uh, eradication PP gain. I do not recommend actually using Force, Tekker, or Ranger as subclasses, as it just really does not become of use to you in the slightest. So make sure that if you go Hunter main class, that you stick with Fighter or Gunner as your subclass. Alright everyone, I hope the video has been very informative to you and has answered any question you may have about Hunter main class using the Sword or Wired Lance as your main weapon or using both of them and also answered which subclasses you want to be using for different situations. Now, if you'd like to stay tuned to the channel for any future videos I'll be posting about Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis, be sure to subscribe so that way you are notified whenever a new video goes live. Thanks everybody for stopping by, listening to the video, and I hope you have a great day. Make sure to take care of yourself. See ya!